Howdy Internet, it's your old friend Dominic here with the All American Casino Guide, a channel dedicated to providing you with all those tips, tricks, tutorials, and trivia that you need, and I do mean need, to know about casinos and casino games. Today, we're going to be talking about five card draw poker. Now, five card draw poker is a good old classic draw poker variant and is really iconic with the old Wild West. It used to be played by cowboys, outlaws, miners, and all sorts of wild folk who populated the Wild West. Anyway, it really was a symbol of toughness and manliness in which players took real pride in their poker skills. It was played on river boats in New Orleans and ran all the way up the Mississippi River. Wild Bill Hickok, the legendary Western folk hero, was even shot dead while playing the game. And it's kind of iconically where we talk about the dead man's hand. Anyway, five card draw used to be the most popular version of poker for like hundreds of years, uh, both in, or in Asia, Europe, and in the United States. And that's all until Texas Hold'em came along and kind of relegated it to a, a side game. Most movies, in fact, that were made before the millennium, uh, which feature poker, will typically have five card draw in them instead of Texas Hold'em. It's not as popular these days, but you might still find it in online casinos and even some land-based ones. But the real thing about five card draw is it's a great way to introduce a newcomer to the game of poker and is really a great game to play at home with friends or family. Like most poker games, five card draw utilizes the standard hand ranking system, which goes from best to worst, straight flush, four of a kind, the full house, the flush, the straight, Three of a kind, two pair, a pair, and last but not least, the high card. So there are some big differences between five card draw and the classic and more popular Texas Hold'em. And the biggest difference uh, is actually in the beginning of the game. You don't have mandatory blind bets. Instead, to play a particular hand of five card draw, you have to provide a mandatory bet known as an ante. Now these antes can vary in how much they are. Some tables will be like a dollar, others two dollars. It all really depends on what particular poker table you happen to be playing at. And in family situations, of course, you could just be playing for chips or small, units of currencies like pennies or nickels, all right? The, but the biggest difference between five card draw and Texas Hold'em is that there is no community pool of cards. Essentially, you are restricted to the cards that were dealt to you and you alone. There is no additional help coming. So players take these five cards and then through a series of rounds will make bets and essentially get rid of certain cards in order to hopefully improve the strength of their hand. So the order of play is divided into four rounds. The first is the betting round, the first betting round. And after that first betting round, we then go to a draw round where players are entitled to relinquish some of their cards in exchange for new cards. Then after these new round of cards have been uh, dealt out and your hands have hopefully improved, there is a second round of betting. And then finally, if there's any players left in the hand, it goes to a showdown where the best hand wins and takes all. Now the betting rounds are practically the same as in Texas Hold'em. You get to check, call, raise, or fold. But if everyone checks in the first round of betting, then it automatically adds an additional ante to the pot from each player. Now, the draw round is when things get really interesting and is really the heart of the game and the thing that makes this particular variation of poker unique. At this stage, you can ask the dealer to replace a number of your cards in your hand. You get to choose which of those cards to replace and how many, and you give those cards to the dealer, uh, hopefully face down to not reveal what you've given away, and the dealer will give you the same number of cards back, hopefully improving your hand overall. 
you're not actually obligated to draw any new cards. If you happened to like the five cards given to you initially by the dealer, you may decline the option, and this is typically known as a standing pat. Now, the number of cards you can draw is usually a maximum of three, but I have run across a few variations of the game in my life where they have increased the limit to four. If the fifth card happens to be an ace or so-called wild card in those particular situations, and we're gonna be talking about those wild cards a little later on the video. Now, sometimes there are, there's in fact no limit to how many cards you can draw and you could actually flush your entire hand and get five new cards. It really depends on the variations you're playing and what kind of rules the dealer happens to be putting into play. So after drawing your cards, you have, the, you have a second and final betting round. And after this, you have that good old showdown with any players that happen to still be in the hand. And as I said before, winner takes all. All right. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick demonstration here of a three-handed game of five card draw in order to kind of understand how the game is played in a visual way. Um, so with five card draw, each player who wants to participate in the, in the particular hand needs to provide an ante. So in this particular case, I'm gonna have these white chips represent one unit or one dollar. And so we have three players at the hand. Now, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and play the cards face up just so you can see what each, which player would have respectively. But it's very important to understand that normally these cards would be a secret to everyone except the particular player who owns them. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip out uh, five cards to each player and see what that looks like. All right, so then the first option goes to the player that is directly positioned left of the dealer. So I'm gonna say that I was the dealer, so that means that this player right here is the first player to make their decision if they want to check, bet, those are pretty much their only options right now. They can only they can either check or bet. So if they want to check, that means that they're going to forego their opportunity to make a bet and offer it to the player to their left, or they can make a bet. Now. Uh, the bets d all depend on the table limits. Some tables will have pot limits where you can only bet as much as, is it, as that's already in the pot. Some t uh, tables might have no limits. Uh, it all depends. So you really need to educate yourself before you get at the table so you know the betting structure. Now, if I was putting myself in this particular player's position, I would look at my hand and think that I have a hot hand of nothing but I obviously don't wanna tell the other players that yet, so I'm gonna play it cool and just say check. Over here, this player has the opposite of a hot hand of nothing. They got a pair of aces with a king kicker. And then finally, uh, we have this player over here, play, represented by me and, my, and the dealer, who has a little bit of a straight going, maybe, possibly. Nine, 10 jack, yeah, open-ended straight. So anyway, uh, this particular player who has been given the option to make the first bet is feeling very confident about their hand, so they're gonna go ahead and bet $5. Um, we're assuming that we're not playing pot limits here. Um, now, I, with my hand, have to make a decision. Is my hand even remotely good enough to play? Because this is gonna be my, pretty much my one opportunity to fold uh, without putting any more money in. Uh, so I'm thinking a straight, you know, a straight draw is a, it's an okay draw, it's an okay hand, um, and I feel lucky, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the five dollars in. Why not? This player realizes that this hand is a hot hand of nothing, and there's too much out there that's bad. They're just gonna fold. All right. So after they fold, that means the money's good, and the first option for draw, which is the second round or the second phase of any particular hand of Texas Hold, oh, sorry, rather five card draw is for them to decide how many cards they wish to discard in order to receive new fresh cards. So aces, gonna keep those for sure. The king, very good kicker card. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna, we're gonna uh, discard these two cards, obviously in secret, and then we're gonna draw two new fresh cards for our hand uh, to replace them. Now, unfortunately, there was no improvement there, but I still have a pair of aces with a king kicker. Pretty damn good hand overall, especially in five card draw, you'll figure that out. So 
Obviously, I don't feel very confident about this sitting at jack high, so I'm gonna drop these two cards right here and hopefully complete that straight. Let's see what happens. Oh my God, no, okay. I, was, I really, I didn't want everyone at home to think I set this up because I didn't, but yes, I got the queen, but then I got that six of hearts, which kind of just screwed up the whole thing. So my hand went from uh, a possible straight to just queen high. So now, after we've, been, after we've received our new cards, the next phase goes back to a round of betting. So this player right here is gonna feel very confident about their hand, uh, and they're gonna try to push me out of the hand maybe. They're gonna double their initial bet of $5 to $10, and me, being the idiot that I am, I'm gonna call that $10 bet because I must be just flush with currency, and it goes down to a showdown where I reveal my queen high, and he reveals his pair of aces with a king kicker, and he takes every single chip in the pot. Now, uh, it's very important to understand the pot limits, so make sure, like I said earlier, you need to educate yourself, because um, you might be walking into essentially a hornet's nest if you don't know the particular rules at that particular table. So as you obviously noticed, there is no community pool like Texas Hold'em. And the advantage of a game like Texas Hold'em is that I can see in that community pool a, essentially I can start mathematically thinking about possible hands that my opponent could be holding, all right? If I don't see three hearts or three diamonds or whatever in the community pool, I know that there is exactly a 0% chance that my opponent has a flush. All right, if I see aces or whatever in the community pool, I know there's a possibility that they're gonna have a pair of aces or so on. But this game is a game of chance and not really a game of skill. Uh, you really have to have a strong mathematical understanding though and try to go for those hands that are more mathematically possible versus just massively powerful in the high in the hierarchy and hand ranks that there are in the game of te uh, in the game of poker. Uh, it's in my opinion it's better to stick with a small pair or two pair than to try to go for a flush or a straight. That's essentially what I'm saying. Uh, the other big component to strategy when it comes to um, five card draw is understanding body language and understanding these verbal and nonverbal cues that we've talked about in our other videos about body language and identifying when someone potentially could be bluffing. Uh, five card draw is a, is a big bluffers game. Um, and really it kind of is, in my opinion, what drew the attractiveness of the game in the Wild West. It really had a mystique of being a ballsy game for ballsy men with, with you know, essentially short expected life, uh, <laughs> very short lifespan. Um, these guys would just aimlessly shove large piles of chips and you certainly see that in films commonly. I can't vouch 100% to the historic accurateness of it, but these films have definitely added to the myth, the legend that is five card draw. Um, in my opinion though, it's not a good idea just to push large sums of chips forward unless you actually happen to be holding a solid hand or you think there is a distinct possibility you might be able to get away with a bluff because your opponent happens to be showing you body language that indicates that they don't feel confident about their particular hand. So guys, that's pretty much it as far as strategy goes. It's a game that you're gonna have to rely on your wits and your perception. So that completes this really basic tutorial on how to play five card draw. It's actually one of my favorite variations on the game of poker, and it was probably my first introduction to the game. And it really holds a special place in my heart because it is the game I was playing, five card draw, jacks are better, that I produced the best five card poker hand I'd ever had, which was a queen high straight flush. And I might add, I had four cards to it, and I drew just one card with faith that, that's, that I was gonna get the uh, straight flush, and it worked out. Oh man, and I slow played that hand. It was so beautiful. So be on the lookout for videos like this in the future. We're gonna be putting other variations of poker and other variations of five card draw in the future. And we also already have a number of variations of poker up on our channel for you to peruse at your leisure. 
Guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like by clickety-clacking that like button. And if there was anything that you were confused about or you would like to share your own personal five card draw stories, go ahead and leave them as a comment down below. And help us grow the channel by slamming that subscribe button, ring-a-ding-ding in that notification bell, because it's the only way you're guaranteed to get those ever so useful push notifications that will inform you every single time we have uploaded a video to the channel, no matter where in the world you happen to be or what time of day it happens to be. Guys, remember also, the last thing and the most important thing is sharing is caring. Share this channel with your friends who happen to like poker or other casino games, because that's the only way we're really going to propel this channel to the numbers we expect. My name's Dominic. This has been the All-America Casino Guide reminding you, play responsibly. <laughs> <laughs>